What? There are some secret sounds within the Mesa Boogie Mark 525? Indeed! And in today's episode, we are going to explore it, and I'm going to show you how to dial in some of these secret sounds. First, though, I want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and then hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I put out my next video. All right, the Mesa Boogie Mark 525. If you're watching this video, you're probably reasonably familiar or very familiar with this amplifier. And uh, maybe you can't dial in sounds, maybe you can dial in some really interesting sounds, but we want to explore secret sounds, maybe things you have never thought about. So let's just jump right in. Now, uh, some caveats here. When it comes to dialing in sound and tones, there's an infinite amount of ways to do it. So there's just so many variables. I could be here for hours, days, really, exploring stuff. So we got to uh, get rid of a lot of variables. So here's here's how this is all connected. Uh, my Mesa Boogie Mark 525 is connected to my Sur uh, Reactive Load IR. The uh, but I also have a Mesa Boogie One by Twelve Lone Star cabinet that's also connected to the Reactive Load. And for those of you that don't know. When you connect an actual speaker cabinet to uh, many reactive loads like the Sur, it disengages the reactive load. So right now, my Mesa Boogie sees my actual 1x12 speaker cabinet as the load. So it's going to work thinking, feeling that that is the load it's working with. It's not going to react to the reactive load. But what you are hearing is Sur's included impulse response. So you are listening to the impulse response of, in this case, a 4x12 cabinet, I think loaded with vintage 30s. So that's what you're gonna listen to. That's what I'm gonna listen to here in my headphones. And I have the cabinet isolated someplace else. It is not mic'd up. So just the Sur IR. The other thing is I'm only gonna stick to my Stratocaster. I'm not gonna play other guitars. I'm only gonna play my single, single, single Stratocaster. And I'm only gonna stick to the bridge or the neck pickup, and for the most part, I'm going to have my volume dimed out to 10. Because again, there's so many variables to sounds. We're trying to simplify things a little bit. Uh, how about the amp itself, the Mesa Boogie? What I'm not going to do a lot of playing with the treble, middle, and bass knobs. So right now, you can see uh, how they're configured. Uh, I'm going to start with there. I may change a little bit, but for the most part, that's what you're going to, uh, that's what we're going to listen to. I'm not going to change. I am going to play with the other knobs, but I'm not going to play with the treble, middle, and bass much. Um, the other thing is, and I'm going to try all the modes, and I'm also not touching the graphic EQ, because again, it just adds even more variables, so I'm not going to touch the graphic EQ. So with all of this in mind, why don't we go ahead and start exploring? The first secret sound has to deal with the gain knob. Most of you uh, probably feel, uh, just like I used to, that a gain knob, it not only makes the volume a little bit louder, but uh, is adds more distortion. Like the more gain, the more distortion. Or uh, the way another guitarist friend of mine put it is that the gain knob should just be called a compression knob. As you turn it up, you should get more compression. And that's probably true on a lot of amps. However, Mesa Boogie does something very different with their gain knob. It's not just that when you turn it up, more signal is passed along through into all the gain stages and into the treble, middle, and bass, etc. It's also a tone knob. So the first secret is your gain knob is a tone knob. And this is, this is in Mesa Boogie's manual. So they say there's three zones for tone and that the gain knob, by the way, um, they say it's the most powerful control and the setting of the gain knob determines the style and personality in each of the modes. So I hope you read the manual. If not, you're hearing it here. The style and personality of each mode is made with the gain knob 
not necessarily to treble, middle, and bass. Although those things are all important, we start with the gain knob. So you have three zones with the gain knob. You have uh, a low gain region. So if you look here, Mesa Boogie says it's from here about 9 to about 11.30. Here to here, that is a low gain uh, zone. Uh, from about 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock, right around there, that is a, a warmer, uh, more saturated zone. And finally, from about 2.30 all the way to maxed out, that is a, a high gain zone with much, much more saturation. Uh, and all, all of this, all of this works well uh, for whether you're doing chords or, you know, single note solos. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to the clean mode. So this has the highest amount of headroom out of all the modes. And I'm going to put it up to about 1130. So this is the low gain zone. You can see how I've got my treble middle bass, my present setup. Um, I do have the master up high because uh, since we're we're a little low in the low end of the gain, remember, the gain is also going to increase the volume. But with it low like this, I have to turn up the master. All right, let's listen to it on the uh, bridge pickup. Oh, and um, and I'm also not a fan of uh, just pure dry guitar, especially in the headphones. So I am using a uh, Hall Reverb from my Kurzweil KSP-8. gain. Um, I can also tell you what I hear uh, is uh, very bright, very bright. Lots of headroom, very bright. Um, yeah, so tons of headroom, lots of room for dynamics. Let's go ahead and turn this up into that warm, more saturated zone. So somewhere around there. Definitely warmer. That's a huge difference. I, I'm hoping that you can hear it because that is a huge difference. A little rounder, so not so plinky, especially on the bridge pickup. Why don't we try it on the neck pickup? Let's hear this. Definitely warmer. I like I like that sound uh, as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the um, uh, max out. Let's max out the game. Let's hear what we get. And I'm on the uh, neck pickup. So that's a big difference. Um, let me bring the gain back down again. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, just that the difference is huge just by the gain knob. Notice though, I'm not uh, clipping. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but this is the uh, clean. Let's try the fat mode, see if anything changes here. But again, we're what we're trying are the secret sounds with just the gain knob. And notice the more I turned up that gain, I didn't get into Distortion, there, there is a little something going on there, but it's not distortion like cranked up amp. There you go. So now we're going to be in the fat mode. And mind you, you guys, there is, a, there is a little bit of me having to play with the microphone or the line input uh, gain when recording this, because as I turn up the gain, things get louder and louder, and I have to back down the, uh, the line input, the gain, uh, <laughs> the microphone or line input gain knob. You, you don't see it. But I have to do that because either I'll either clip the converters or I'll give you um, uh, the sense that it sounds better just because it's louder. We want to keep that. So I'm trying to keep the volume pretty much the same. Um, all right. So here we go. Um, here is the uh, fat mode. Yeah. A neck pickup, fat mode, low gain. Now we're going to turn up the uh, the gain knob here. So about two o'clock. But what I am going to do is I'm going to bring the master down because as I'm turning up the gain, it is getting louder. So I got to bring the master down a little bit. All right, I didn't do that much for the clean modes, but I am going to start doing it from here on out. Playing with the master in the game, you do have to uh, do that. But nevertheless, let's listen to it. Uh, I'm back in um, bridge mode or back in the bridge position. <laughs> Do ahead, uh, go ahead and crank this up. Uh, as I'm cranking this up, I have to bring. I'm going to bring the bass down a little bit because it's going to get a little too bassy, and I got to keep bringing down that master. All right. So again, I'm in the bridge position. Make the comparison back in the lower gain mode. Okay, definitely brighter, a uh, little less uh, there. Let's go on to the um, crunch mode. Okay, so as you know, crunch mode is the highest gain in this first channel. Uh, so we're going to go back to this. I might have to bring this down a little bit. I can play at the gain. I'm leaving the mid there for now. All right, we're at the neck pickup crunch mode, the lower uh, region of gain. <laughs> It's 
go to the uh, bridge pickup. All right, now we're going to uh, bring up the gain even more. All right, so notice something. I don't have to change the master too much, uh, but let's listen to it. Yep, it's definitely gainier, that's for sure. Crank up the gain all the way. Here's the low game mode. Yeah, again, big difference. Let's just quickly go to the uh, high gain modes. So let's see, we're in the low gain modes. Uh, I'm gonna try here of uh, the Mark II C. All right, Mark II C in the low gain region. Let's go to the higher gain region. I'm gonna to have to bring down the master again. Just a little. the gain. Alright, let's bring that game back to the low gain region. Let's do the Mark IV mode. Again, I'm not gonna play with these much. Um, it's too many variables, but again, low game mode, Mark IV. Uh, we're in the bridge position.
All right, let's do the um, the middle of the ground, warmer region. <laughs> Having a little too much fun there. Yeah, all right. Finally, the extreme mode. Um. Uh, let's hear it in the low gain zone. Uh... Okay, let's put it to the middle warmer zone. just that it's more saturated but you hear the tone changes quite a bit so there really is as far as i can tell from what i'm hearing when you're in that low gain zone especially in clean and fat modes it is very very um plinky bright open and insanely dynamic now I have my cabinet here in the closet, but I've played with this a little bit with just the speaker cabinets and it will blow your ears off. Um, the amount of dynamics, if you don't watch it when you're using an actual speaker cabinet in the room, because the dynamics are like this in that clean and fat mode. So um, pretty interesting. I also noticed that as you turn up the gain knob, indeed, there is some compression. So. You will get distortion, you'll get compression, but I'm more amazed at the secret sound of tone. And remember, if you have it down to the lower gain region, turn up the master so you can get this massive, loud sound. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Let's look at this. I wanna go back into the clean mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn down all the tone knobs. Look at this. And I'm gonna crank up the gain. I'm gonna turn the master up. 
Oof, I'm really going to turn that up. Presence I'll leave in the middle. So look at that. Cranked up gain, treble mid bass. What do you think this is going to sound like? You ready? All right. Thought about it? My volume's up. Here we go. No sound. So although this isn't in itself a sound, there is something about this, isn't there? Because you tell me the amount of amps out there where you can turn down the treble mid bass down to uh, zero or its minimum, and there's no sound. I mean, even a, a, a Marshall Plexi, I mean, if you turn turn up the volume, if it's a non-master volume, you turn up the volume, you're gonna get a, get a sound. Even if you turn treble mid bass down, you're still gonna get a sound. But in this case, you are not getting a sound. This is awesome because it gives us a clue in finding secrets of the Mesa Boogie Mar 525. All right, so if also if you read the manual, you can tell that the next important knob after gain is the treble. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm only gonna turn up the treble. And let's hear what this sounds like. So middle and bass are completely up. Will we get a sound now? We do, we do. Let me turn it up, way up. Okay, I, I gotta turn that down. So we do get a sound. Um, you now, whether you think that's usable is really up to you, but it is obviously a very uh, trebly sound. Um, very bright. Let me turn that. What if I turn up the mid? Now, what I'm going to do is turn it up here to noon. Remember on the Mesa Mar 525, noon is like the old mid range, but maxed out because I'm not going to turn it past noon because some of you know that turns into a boost, but we just want to play around here. So let's listen to it. Treble and bass to zero. Let's listen to just the mid. <laughs> usable, uh, I think. Uh, but let's go ahead and crank it up even more. So now let's go into the boost mode. So no treble, no bass. I have the gain cranked up. I have this mid cranked up. So now it's in a mid boost. I've got to turn down the volume because it's, it's getting loud. <laughs> that's usable I actually think that could be a usable sound with just the mid it's it's very focused in the mid-range but what an interesting sound uh, to me that I think that's really just fascinating um, I could keep turning up the master and that would also do some things to it which we're gonna get to later but let's keep going I'm gonna get rid of the mid how about if I just do the bass how is that gonna sound let's listen Let me keep turning up that bass all the all, all the way. <clears throat> it's exactly what you kind of think that it would be very uh, muffled. Sounds like someone's put a blanket over it, but it gives you an idea of what the bass knob, what kind of frequencies we're dealing with. So uh, something to try out is turn them all down, <coughs> set the game where you might like, but turn, just use one of these knobs and you'll start to learn about how the, uh, uh, you'll start to learn about how to gain stage this amp appropriately. 
Okay, the next secret sound has to do with that master. I'm going to stay in the clean mode. What I'm going to do is set this up to a sound I normally would do. Typically, the treble knob should be set around here, around noon. Uh, the mid-range, well, I'm actually going to turn it up here because I do want some mid-range. And the bass, uh, I'm going to put it around here. But what I want you to listen to, and um, uh, I'm going to bring this down a little bit, the presence. What I want you to listen to is, I'm going to play it. So I'm going to play it, and it should be fairly clean. Okay, sounds you would expect, but listen to what happens when I turn up the master. I'm going to turn it to no uh, noon. There's a little bit of distortion. There's some clipping going on. Let me keep going. Over. You know what? Actually, let's just get cut to the chase. Max it out. So by cranking the master up, you're starting to distort the uh, phase inverter because the uh, Mark V25 is a pre-phase inverter master. So as you turn up the volume, what you're doing is you're starting to cook that, uh, <laughs> cook in a good way, uh, the pre-phase inverter. Uh, the phase inverter because you're you're sending more signal into it. This is not a post phase inverter uh, amplifier, so that could be a secret little tone shaping. There is getting the distortion not from the preamp tubes, the 12 AX7s uh, in the preamp section, but getting it from the uh, the master over here. Now uh, another sound we could try, and I'm going to, is to crank up the mid because the mid is a boost. I got really got to turn down the bass. And now crank up the master. So cranked up gain, cranked up mid-range, cranked up master. Uh, let's try this out. is really nasally and I think it's a really cool sound but mind you I'm cooking my tubes and my output section I don't know if it's clipping the uh, output tubes but definitely you're getting phase inverter distortion all right my uh, my next secret sound is in the uh, mark 4 mode So here, in this case, what I wanted to do was try something that's actually in the uh, manual about the Mark IV mode and try it in a low gain mode that could be a little smoother, creamier, probably perfect for blues. So uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to turn down the 25 watt mode into the 10 watt mode. And I'm going to be in the low gain region. I'm in the Mark IV mode. I'm going to start with these settings. Um, in the 10 watt mode, it should make, it should uh, get rid of so much of the punch and that transient. So let's give it a listen.
try it in that 10 watt mode. Or let's try in the 25 watt. That was the 10 watt mode. <laughs> All right, so it's a little louder. It is a little more jabby, I think. So less creamy, less rounding off of the transients. So try that with the Mark IV mode. Instead of thinking of it as the high gain monster that it's well known for, try it in that lower gain region. Of course, again, you'll have to turn up the volume to make up for it. So you got a cool thing going because you have to turn up the volume. You might be getting a little bit of distortion from the uh, phase inverter as well so that's kind of that's what's kind of cool about this is that you can let that output section work a little bit so there's the next secret because this is a low powered amp you have to turn up the volume to get some decent playing volumes if you're sitting in your room the, and remember the this is a pre-phase inverter uh, master so as you turn up the master to get louder you're also going to get maybe a little bit increased compression and some distortion from the phase inverter and it's going to be working a little bit harder than say a hundred watt mark five uh, where in that case you can't really crank up the volume too much because well you just blow your head off uh, so very cool my friends, I hope you enjoyed some of these secret sounds of the Mesa Boogie Mark V. Notice something, I did not play with the treble uh, middle and bass knobs a lot. I didn't even use the graphic EQ. So these secret sounds are part of exper uh, me experimenting with it, finding about the pre-phase inverter master. And some of it is from the manual. You just have to dig in and start reading. Um, and then also some other sources. If you want to find out your secret sound, uh, I'm running out of time here. Here's what you should do. Try this. Look at the Mesa Boogie uh, Mark I uh, reissue manual. And more specifically, look at the snakeskin that was released about 15 years ago or so. Look at that. There's actually some Carlos Santana settings. Try those settings on your Mark 525. See what you come up with. Let me know in the comments if you tried it. If you have your own secret sound, please let me know in the comments. Share it with us so we could try this as well. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.